Retrieval Augmented Generation is the way to give your AI agents the ability to search and leverage your knowledge and documents. But it feels like there are a million strategies for RAG out there. How do you know which is best for your use case? What even are all the RAG strategies that we can pick from? And should we be combining some together? It gets overwhelming pretty fast when you try to optimize a RAG system for your use case. But don't worry, because I've got you covered in this video, answering all of those questions for you. Now, beware, this is a very informationally dense video. I want to try a new format where I have shorter content that's super value packed for you. And so please let me know in the comments as I'm going through any of these RAG strategies, if there's one that you want me to make a dedicated video for. And if I already have that, I'll link to the video when I'm covering that strategy specifically. So the goal that I have for you right now is just to get you started thinking about the strategies that will apply to your use cases and how you can combine them together. Because usually the optimal solution is going to combine around three to five RAG strategies. So hopefully going into this, you understand RAG at least at a high level. We have our data preparation phase and the actual retreat augmented generation phase. And so for data preparation, we take our documents, we chunk them up into bite-sized pieces of information for our LLM, we embed them to then put in our vector database or potentially a knowledge graph, which I'll talk about later as well. And then for our query process, this is where we take a question from a user, like what are the action items from a meeting, for example, very common RAG use case. We embed that query and then we search our vector database to find similar chunks that we then pass into the large language model so it's able to leverage that as extra context to augment its answer. That's why it's called retrieval augmented generation. And so for example, the action items in the meeting are X, Y, Z. So that's RAG at a high level, but there are so many different ways for us to one, do the data preparation, different chunking strategies. And then also the way that we search the vector database, there are a million ways to do that, even storing information in alternate formats like a knowledge graph. And so that is what I'm gonna cover with you here, starting with our number one re-ranking. This is the first strategy that I use for almost every RAG implementation. And also as a resource to go along with all of these strategies, I have a GitHub repo that I'll link to below that has a readme that dives deeper into all of the 11 strategies that we have today. So some research in the docs folder, some pseudocode examples for you to reference, and then also I have a full implementation that's not production ready because it's not ideal to try to combine as many as possible, but I'm doing this just as a reference for you. Feel free to give it to an AI coding assistant to use as a starting point as well. And so with that, re-ranking. So with this strategy, we have a two-step retrieval. First, we're going to pull a large number of chunks from our vector database, but then we're going to use this specialized re-ranker model, often a cross encoder, to find the ones that are actually relevant to our query and then just return some of those. And so in the end, the large language model only gets a few of the chunks, but it's the ones that are the most relevant. And this is so important because if we were to go to our LLM and just give it 20, 50 or more chunks right away, we're going to completely overwhelm it. And so by having this specialized model pull in more context, but then reduce it for the LLM, we're able to consider more knowledge without overwhelming it. And it is going to be slightly more expensive because we have the second model, but it's not that much more. I love using re-ranking in most of my RAG implementations. And I've got a code example that you can pause and take a look at right here if you are interested. I'll have this for each of the strategies that I cover. Next up, we have a Gentic RAG. I've covered this a ton on my channel before, link to a video right here. It's all about giving our agent the ability to choose how it searches our knowledge base. Like maybe it can do a classic semantic search, but also if it wants to, it can read the entire text of a single document. And I'll show you this right now in a live project. So I'm here in my neon dashboard, which is quickly becoming my go-to for Postgres. And I love using Postgres with PG Vector for most of my RAG AI agents. And so I have one table here for our chunks and then another table that stores the higher level information, each individual document. And my agent can pick and choose where it searches based on the question. And so this makes RAG very flexible, but it is going to be less predictable as well. So you want to incorporate agentic RAG when you have very clear instructions for when you want it to search the knowledge in the different ways that you give it. And then also here is a code example if you want to pause and take a look at that. Next up we have knowledge graphs. Another thing that I've covered a lot in my content, link to a video right here. We're combining traditional vector search, which is what I showed in this diagram, with a new type of database, a graph database that stores entity relationships or 
agent can not just do similarity search, but it can also search through relationships that we have in all of the entities in our knowledge. And so you generally end up with a graph that looks like this, that you're usually using a large language model to build, extracting the entities and relationships from the raw text that you feed in. And so knowledge graphs are fantastic for interconnected data, but just keep in mind, since we're usually using an LLM to extract from documents, it's gonna be a lot slower and more expensive to create our knowledge graphs. And so take a look at this. This is the pseudocode if you wanna see an example using graffiti, which is my favorite library for working with knowledge graphs. Next, we have contextual retrieval, which is something that Anthropic has done a lot of research on. They have some very enticing statistics for how much it helps with the general retrieval process. And so what we're doing is we're using a large language model to enrich each chunk with information that we put at the start that describes how the chunk fits with the rest of the document. So back in my Neon dashboard, I'll show you what this looks like in a real database. And so for all of the chunks that I have stored here, if I click into any one of them, take a look at this. We have this text that is prepended that describes how this specific chunk fits with the document. And then we have the triple dash and then the content of the actual chunk. And so this is embedded along with the rest of the information for every chunk that we have. So there's just more context with everything that we store, but we're using a large language model to create every chunk now. And so it's going to be a lot slower and more expensive like knowledge graphs. Next is query expansion. This is one of the simplest. All we're doing here is taking the user query and before we send it into the search, we are using a large language model to expand the query to make it more specific in ways that we know are going to lead to pulling more relevant chunks from the knowledge base. And so we define the instructions for how to improve the precision by adding more relevant details. Obviously the trade-off here is that it's going to be slower because we have an extra large language model call for every single search that we perform. And another simple and kind of similar RAG strategy is multi-query RAG. So instead of using a large language model to expand upon one query, we're using an LLM to generate multiple different variants and then sending them into our search in parallel. And so it gives us more comprehensive coverage, obviously at the cost of having an LLM call before each search again, and then more database queries overall. And so here is a quick code example. Now onto context aware chunking. This one's a little bit different because up until this point, we've only been talking about strategies for the query process, but it's also important to have solid strategies for data preparation. And so this is speaking to how we split up our documents to put in our knowledge base, because we definitely need to. If we don't split our documents into bite-sized pieces of information, then our embeddings are inaccurate and our agents are pulling way too much information. But when we split, we want to make sure that we maintain the document structure. And so what we're doing here is we're using an embedding model to find the natural boundaries in our documents so that we can split and it's going to be free and fast and we will maintain our document structure. It's obviously more complex than if we're just doing like a split every 1000 characters or something like that. But I find this to be very, very worth it. And Docling is a library that I use in Python that makes it very easy to implement hybrid chunking, which is a form of of context aware chunking. I got a video on that right here. Now for another chunking strategy, we have a late chunking. Full disclosure, this is the only one that I haven't used myself. It's also definitely the most complicated, but I wanted to include it here because I think that it is fascinating. The idea here is that we apply the embedding model onto the document before we chunk it, unlike most chunking strategies. And then we're going to chunk up the token embeddings. And so what we get out of this is that each of the chunks still maintain the context of the rest of the document document. So this obviously leads to maintaining full document context better, and it's leveraging longer context embedding models. Of course, the trade-off here is it is a lot more complex. In fact, you might even be thinking to yourself, Cole, whoa, this is insane. Like, what are you even talking about here? Well, just let me know if you want me to make a video on late chunking specifically, like I said, for any of these strategies. Next, we have hierarchical rag. And the idea here is that we have different layers of our knowledge stored in our database. So we can have these parent-child chunk relationships. And generally, we store these relationships as metadata for all of our chunks. And so we can search small to be very precise, right, like searching individual paragraphs, but then we can pull the entire document for a specific chunk that we find. So we're balancing precision, you know, searching small with context returning big. And you could argue that hierarchical reg is sort of a subset of agentic reg, because it sounds very similar to what I was showing you in Neon earlier. And going back to Neon really quick, I'll actually show you this. Let's say that our search finds this chunk right here. We can look at the metadata and we can see that this chunk came from this specific file. So then we could go to the document
document metadata table and pull the content of that entire file. So for a, a system where you want it to do precise search, but then look at larger sets of context, like assuming your documents aren't too big to read the whole thing, then this is an awesome approach. It obviously adds more complexity and a little bit of unpredictability like agentic reg, but this is a very powerful strategy as well. Next is self-reflective reg. After the last couple, I just want to show you another simple one again, because all we have here is a self-correcting search loop. So we perform our initial search, and then we call upon a large language model, given the chunks and the question, to produce some kind of grade, like maybe on a one through five scale. And then if it's less than three, for example, then we're going to call the rag tool again with a refined search to try to get more relevant chunks. And so it's self-correcting just at the cost of more LLM calls, because obviously after every search, now we need to call into a secondary LLM before we're returning chunks to our agent, and then potentially retrying. Last but not least, we have fine-tune embeddings. And this applies to both embedding during the query process and in the indexing process. Because what you can do with embedding models, just like large language models, is fine-tune them on a domain-specific data set, like for legal or for medical. And for my research, five to 10% accuracy gains, you can make it so smaller embedding models, even open source ones, can outperform a larger, more generic ones on your specific use case. Now, this requires a lot of data to train and infrastructure ongoing maintenance since it is your embedding model now, but this is a very powerful use case when you have a data set that you can use to train a model. For example, you might have a use case where you want the similarity to be based more on the sentiment versus the semantic similarity of the text. So for a pre-trained embedding model, my order was late is going to be similar to shipping was fast, right? Because that's both about the order itself versus the individual items. But you can fine tune the embedding model to make it so that my order was late is going to be most like items are always sold out because now it's based more on sentiment. You can have a sentiment based training set to make your embedding model operate like this instead. So there you go. That is the rundown I have for you on all the main rag strategies and their pros and cons. And if you want to dive deeper into any of them, again, check out this repository. And I've got all these examples with pseudocode focusing on using the Postgres with PG vector, because especially with neon, that is my go to right now for my rag agents. And last golden nugget that I'm going to leave you with. If you want to focus on three rag strategies to start, because remember, I recommend combining three to five for the most accurate use cases, I would look at re-ranking, agentic rag, and context aware chunking, like specifically hybrid reg with Docling has been killing it for me. That's my like super tactical recommendation for you to end things off. So with that, if you appreciate this video, you're looking forward to more things on AI agents and reg, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.